Lise Starla is absolutely down horrendous for Ragna. You know what? I would say that I'm surprised by why she is down bad for him and how she actually sees the man. But at the same time, this totally fits her freaking character. Because she doesn't see him as Ragna, a dude. She sees him as a Silverine freaking weapon. I know she's absolutely in love with him because she creates him and everything. But watching this man actually talk or actually more so her having an inner thought of what he is saying. And it's, well, not even Ragna's body. It's his voice but his body is the silvering if you actually look closely at um his uh bottom part there is something there um which i will not really say yeah you know they really went hard with the extra details with my boy ragna so in episode 9 we learn more about starlia and how she actually might be op in some way at the very least she knows when crimson's on his bs her power doesn't necessarily work like how crimson was thinking it does because she can't tell when somebody's aura fluctuates but what he didn't know is that when you're telling the truth it's blue and when you're lying it's red and she stated that she's the only one who has that power so if this girl ever gets hired as a lie detector i, I mean like there you go ggs you got that freaking job a hundred percent honestly I figured Crimson was going to be able to BS his way out of it some way, somehow. And I feel like with any other character, he probably could have pulled it off, but not on Starlia. No, not at all. Because she was already kind of suspicious of the dude in the first place. And she could tell that some of the things that he was saying were truthful. But after Starlia was done listening to Crimson's BS, because she knew he was on some BS 100%, man. And I really like that about her. She was actually going to rest in pepperoni, but man, she was like, yeah. Yep, you know what? Uh, I don't trust you whatsoever, and you're going to die now. And when she sent her big sword, and I mean, that thing is huge, right after Crimson, and time slowed down while Crimson was thinking, I thought then and there, Starlia was actually going to stop the blade at the very last second. I don't know why. I'm not saying that would have been totally in line with her character, but I just kind of figured it was going to go, oh, last second, I actually trust you now, or maybe you're not so bad after all, but no, she was definitely going for the kill. That's when Ragnar comes in, freaking stops her giant sword from impaling Crimson, which is pretty impressive, I want to say, you know, because he completely stopped it. And Starlia was definitely going for killing and tint, but instead of her being, oh my god, what the heck, you, you shouldn't be able to do that? No. She is absolutely in awe and falls in love with the dude at first sight. Like I said at the beginning, it's because she sees him as the freaking sword. So yeah, that's a little bit ridiculous, I must say. I don't think Ragnar's gonna ever catch feelings for her. Maybe by the end of the series, they will be together. I don't even know. Uh, if she's even gonna be that important, but man is not having any time for a relationship or whatnot. He got them goals, he is a Chad, and he wants to destroy all the dragons. Which, bringing up destroying the dragons again, man just cannot get Ultimatia out of his freaking head. To be fair, I don't even blame him. She a baddie, dude. I don't really have her out of my head for different reasons. He wants to smash Ultimatia in a different way than I would want to smash Ultimatia, but his whole obsession with destroying destroying Ultimatia really had me thinking, especially because I believe I saw this as a comment, basically summed up as Ultimatia is a small fish in the Pacific Ocean. Now, that's not the actual quote that somebody posted, but that's just kind of the analogy that I have thinking because I'm not trying to downplay Ultimatia's importance or her power by any means. You know, I'm not saying that she's absolutely fodder by any means. She has to be pretty freaking strong. You know, she's one of the superior dragons, but man is still obsessed with taking her down but in reality you take her down what does that ultimately do what if she's not even the strongest of the superior dragons what if she's actually one of the weakest yeah you took one of them down which i get is his goal don't get me wrong you know he wants to destroy all of them but at the same time it's like dude you got bigger and badder freaking foes to be. I'm not saying this is 100% facts. So yeah, he's absolutely obsessed and, and dude needs to chill. Crimson was scolding him again because it's like, dude, calm down. Just get Ultimatia out of your freaking mind. It doesn't matter because dude was like, we have to go back to the capital so I can smack Ultimatia. Don't get me wrong, man. That fight was truly epic. I made multiple videos on it. It was fantastic. But like Crimson said, there are two more dragons coming down that, you know, need, need some uh, butt kicking, if you know what I mean. So hopefully Ragna just chills out about Ultimatia, bro, and we get some more freaking awesome fights. And also another thing is... 
that when Crimson was going to be rest in pepperoni by Starlia, he did say that, oh, you know, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna die, but I'm gonna just come back to life and just hide away and then pick Ragna up and then we're gonna, you know, get out of here. Does that mean that Crimson is technically immortal? Because he's died at least two times. I remember him shooting himself in the face and rest in pepperoni himself, and then he just came back like two seconds later. Is he technically not able to die through age or well anything killing him so i'm guessing the reason why he needs ragna in the first place to complete his mission his goal his dream whatever is because he lacks the firepower i guess if he can't freaking die and the other superior dragons technically can then he would just win the war of attrition maybe to a certain extent maybe i kind of said that wrong technically if crimson's not able to even damage the other superior dragons it wouldn't really be a war of attrition crimson would still be alive and just be you know killed over and over but you know nobody would really win in that situation it'd just be a complete stalemate i don't know i could be wrong about that i probably am and again i don't know if this crimson is from the future and was able to return to the past from the previous comments that crimson has said and from the way that he's acting towards starlia and knowing about her at least more than probably he should know i'm thinking that this crimson is actually the crimson from the freaking future and was able to go back in time with Ragna, I don't even understand. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't know, bro. I'm probably thinking way too hard about this and too far into it. Everyone, I hope you all did enjoy the video. And if you would, please use code Ilya on all G for your orders. I'd really appreciate that. And I hope you all have a fantastic day, night, evening, morning, whatever the hell time it is for you. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.